Hi, welcome to the Lux channel. So long back I shot uh, two video episodes on uh, uh, done tap uh, interfaces. Uh, in the first episode, I really uh, discussed uh, uh, its uh, significance, and uh, I have also discussed uh, 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 you can uh, use done tap for uh, various. Uh, applications especially whenever you do user space network programming you can tap or you can get the packets from kernel space to the user space and turn is used for layer 3 context and tap is used for you know layer 2 context so if you uh, go through these episodes the second episode i have discussed a sample code so that you can create a such an interface and then you can access the same in the user space so i highly recommend uh, if you haven't yet watched uh, uh, to watch these two episodes as you can see in the first episode i was even uh, giving an example where uh, how this uh, you know turn tap interfaces mimics uh, you know the real uh, physical interfaces like i was showing a network switch and uh, whenever you have such you know tap interface uh, you can uh, create a virtual uh, bridge and then you can connect this tap interface to that virtual bridge and then uh, the real physical port you can connect to that uh, you know virtual uh, uh, bridge uh, the linux kernel bridge and then you can access and uh, you can uh, get the packets to the user space so i suggest you to watch these two episodes because uh, this is something i don't want to discuss about the basics this is something i want to discuss about uh, the v10 project it's quite an interesting project because this is uh, 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 been used for uh, uh, you know vpn applications or any kind of applications usually if uh, you are a network admin uh, you may be already well aware of v10 uh, solution sometimes if you need to create some kind of you know tunnels between uh, you know one end uh, or a site one side to the other site you can use uh, the v10 uh, uh, solution so if you go to their main project website you can see here this is their project website and uh, yeah this link also points to the same uh, vten project website so this is hosted in uh, sourceforge so if you go here in sourceforge you can see uh, the description of vten so this is something i quickly discussed in the first episode in the context of discussing about the tent app uh, interfaces because this is one very good example where the turn tap interface is used in the v10 uh, uh, source uh, as a part of its platform so if you uh, go through this uh, features you can see it has uh, various interesting features um, in fact v10 looks more or less like even uh, my uh, you know uh, uh, toffee or uh, toffee data center although the toffee data center have various other uh, modules and it has a complete full fledged van optimization versus v10 is all about providing a vpn like solution but uh, to support encryption as well as uh, you know compression and various other things but it is a very basic compression it supports as we explore its source code so you can see here it has uh, these two things which you can focus you can uh, see there uh, we can uh, you can uh, send your uh, data through tcp tunnels you can send it via udp tunnels and stuff like that so while sending the same you can compress you can encrypt and you can do whatever uh, the way you want so you can see here compression you can do the same and encryption you can do the same and you can also do some kind of you know preliminary traffic shaping and stuff like that so i uh, uh, come across a real uh, vten uh, uh, implementation uh, that is uh, done in one of my clients uh, networks so which is uh, i even had some test data or i mean test to capture packets and i was able to explore its uh, you know the way it encapsulates the packets unfortunately since it is quite confidential i cannot show that real wireshark dumps and i don't have the you know v10 setup at my end so this is the reason i can't show that but i have done a quick slide something like this where it explains conceptually what exactly is happening so that's what is what they mentioned in the feature so if you see here you have two sides and uh, you can create a tunnel from one side to the other side uh, much like a vpn of course it is a vpn so you can create a sort of you know vpn tunnel and you can send the data through this tunnel inside udp or else inside uh, you know tcp so uh, this 
uh, creates the tunnel and with that uh, you, if you want optionally you can encrypt you should always understand whenever i i get this uh, you know um, situation whenever anyone discusses about vpn they always discuss about uh, uh, encryption of the data or uh, your uh, you know vpn uh, packets which is really baseless because uh, sometimes applications itself have encryption if you send ssl data inside a vpn and if you do encryption of that ssl data it doesn't have any purpose so it's already encrypted who cares actually so uh, vpn need not have to be encrypted all the time so that's what is my point so but anyway you can uh, do that and as you can see here you can do a tunnel you can create a tunnel whichever way you want you can through send it through udp packets sometimes you should understand isps are uh, well optimized to handle udp data and if you have any uh, low performance uh, uh, critical networks uh, sometimes uh, sending uh, this data through udp uh, packets is a better uh, uh, choice than sending through tcp because isps generally they accelerate udp data thinking it's a wipe uh, or some uh, streaming data so they generally accelerate uh, or prioritize udp data thinking it's a real time packets versus something like tcp data because tcp is bandwidth intensive so isps uh, when they do their qas they generally uh, give some kind of low priority thinking or assuming that it is less critical data so you can do whichever you want you can do udp tunneling you can do tcp tunneling with vtun so that's what this slide really explains but the point is not just about tunneling the point is about it uses the tun tap interface and using that uh, i mean tun tap platform and using the tun tap platform it actually does this so the entire uh, context of this video is all about tun tap interface being used in uh, a project like vtun so uh, if you are uh, curious about uh, deploying vtun or uh, installing the same uh, i am not uh, interested to cover as a part of this episode you can anyway find uh, through some uh, uh, sources like this one i found it uh, this one and uh, the other uh, documentation somewhere i found it in the main uh, v10 project as well so you can go through the same and uh, that is not you know i don't uh, want to cover as part of this episode i want to discuss its uh, source code so that we can explore its uh, you know the architecture where uh, you know tun tap interfaces are being coded inside the v10 project so if you explore its uh, source code uh, this is the v10-303 uh, which i uh, downloaded from that uh, source forge uh, website you can see here i just downloaded the same i got that version so if you explore the source uh, you have uh, all this uh, stuff let me close all the files uh, so let us walk around step by step you can see here this is where the main uh, uh, now files are situated which are not grouped you can see here um, so in that uh, some couple of important files let me just walk you through so you can see here inside this uh, generic folder you have this uh, tun device and the tun device uh, have this uh, uh, driver uh, which they have written now you can see here you have this uh, tun open and inside you have this uh, i mean the abstract call so that they don't need to use that uh, individual uh, calls uh, whenever it needs so instead they have written this abstract calls so whenever they want they can just use this abstract call so they have written this tun open and you can have this stuff i mean you have this stuff and then below that you have this turn close and uh, turn write and read so uh, it's just an abstract call you can see in the case of write it is just taking the same parameter function parameters it is calling the same instead of calling just write and read they are abstracting with the turn write and turn read as simple as that but in the case of open they have all this initialization they have just you know, put inside that api so this is your turn open and uh, close for close it is just a close of file descriptor so as simple as that but they are just abstracting the same and they are just sending this uh, dummy you know device uh, name so that it is easy when they call this api so and you have this uh, two apis you can see here uh, tcp proto and uh, udp proto so you have this uh, two apis uh, and before discussing you can just hop on to this linux folder and you have this uh, ton device and no tap device and turn device 
so here is something uh, uh, you can uh, again uh, focus so uh, in case if you want to have or if you want to get any example a proper working tent app uh, you know api uh, uh, flow you can even go through v10 uh, source and inside you have this uh, ton uh, open and in this uh, it can handle both ton and tap uh, as you can see here if it is uh, ton uh, they are passing that you know option over here is ton so if it is ton it does that initialization and it does this uh, uh, you know open and it does you know the device uh, initialization and then uh, you have other uh, APIs as well. You can see here, if it is turn open, uh, what to do? If it is tap open, then what to do? Because uh, you have that uh, second parameter which is which says that Eastern. So they are setting it here. So device and uh, if it is Eastern, then it is turn open, and if it is not, then it is tap open. And then you have that other abstract call. So you know turn close and tap close, and the uh, same way you have this uh, turn right and tap right, or turn read and tap read. So this is the reason I highly recommend you. In case if you want to get an example implementation of the same, you can go through the uh, V10 project itself very good uh, example and its source is uh, very easy to follow as simple as that you can see it's just very very simple and we can just you know derive uh, a better understanding of you know uh, doing uh, uh, a sort of you know a network application with tantap interfaces so that it accomplishes uh, you know the packet forwarding uh, uh, platform the way you want whether it is a layer 3 context or else a layer 2 context or bridging context so other than that uh, it has this uh, you know other uh, free bsd variants and all which is something which i uh, never explored and moreover i was even confused why it has this uh, in generic you have this uh, you know 10 device and then inside the linux it has this so i have not uh, i i didn't got the time much to explore but this is something i have even uh, tried and uh, i mean this under the linux folder uh, this is something i have tried and it works uh, worked perfectly fine so this is something i can guarantee it just works fine and even you can uh, you know uh, go through the api flow it just works fine so so other than that uh, it has certain uh, apis you can see here uh, to uh, perform uh, uh, you know compression and uh, to perform uh, encryption you have all this api you have this uh, you know lgo and zlib you can see here it has this you know again abstract apis for lgo it has this abstract apis so once again uh, in case if you are interested to do some changes to the source of v10 and introduce uh, anything uh, further on the same as a network software developer you can uh, go through the same uh, this is something i went through i have extensively went through and i have done some experimentation so that is not an issue but having said that uh, this is not exactly the architecture I use it for uh, Toffee or uh, more precisely Toffee data center because it has a complete different perspective and it's a complete different uh, uh, set of objectives where I am looking for so but it is a good source you can explore you can get a very good understanding from uh, uh, you know Witten project so you have all this uh, components and uh, I have not ever explored the security part of that or else the encryption module. So, so somewhere you can see here it has all this uh, decrypt encrypt and uh, I am not sure uh, you have a choice for any algorithm to choose and other stuff. So, so uh, in case uh, if you are going, uh, I mean uh, as a part of conclusion I can say that uh, uh, if you are uh, uh, going through tantap interfaces so you can pick such examples and one more thing i can suggest is uh, if you go to wiki you have all these applications of uh, you know tantap interfaces so one among them is uh, you know vten project you can see here one among them is vten project so even there they mention uh, you can have all these choices you can send it whichever way you want as a part of tunnel and as well you can do encryption compression and even traffic shaping and stuff like that so i, I have not gone through the traffic shaping as well whereas uh, the modules which i went through extensively is this uh, tantap stuff and as well as uh, uh, you know couple of them uh, uh, like uh, you know compression and uh, stuff like that because this is just user space libraries you can see here it is a user space library 
uh, it is including somewhere here you can see here to do lgo it is uh, using this uh, you know user space library so to uh, get that lgo optimization you need to install some uh, lgo uh, you know development based dependencies uh, so tentap is uh, quite interesting uh, whenever you are doing uh, especially applications uh, based on stn or um, virtualization and stuff like that uh, it's quite an interesting thing uh, to explore uh, especially as a part of network software programming you can explore tentap and besides um, of course you can explore the intel's dpdk uh, packet forwarding framework as well so this is something i generally discussed in uh, uh, my you know toffy uh, uh, project videos once i just discussed as a part of this episode so van opt network stack architecture although i don't want to much discuss about van opt in this episode because this is completely uh, going to take you away and it is a bit off topic but something like that i generally discussed but uh, in that i forgot to mention about tentap because Besides Tentap, you have all these options. You can use uh, Intel's uh, DPDK stack, and then you can use even uh, native uh, kernels, uh, uh, network forwarding, uh, uh, you know, networking subsystem. But besides, if you need anything to get to the user space, you have one option which is uh, Tentap. It is, it has a lot of, uh, you know. Uh, wide range of applications which you need to explore so it is something uh, it's a sort of you know architectural decision uh, based on tentap you have such an uh, certain possibilities uh, which you can explore as a part of network software uh, uh, programming and network software architecture so you should definitely go through and you need to have some uh, you know um, Uh, in case you never explored you can have some kind of uh, uh, you know research experimental setup with tentap uh, sometimes you need to do custom code uh, it's just not just uh, you know configuring some set of commands and then getting some you know tentap interface so beyond that as a network software programming uh, you can uh, uh, you know <laughs> Uh, you can have uh, your network application or networking stack uh, you know uh, uh, using these interfaces stand up interfaces and you can do your magic on top of it so this is something i highly recommend as a part of uh, your datacom expertise uh, so hope you guys loved watching this uh, video uh, in case if you have anything to discuss especially the tent app is something where i got lot of emails uh, regarding the same uh, from various uh, viewers so in case if you have anything to discuss uh, casually uh, discuss with me in uh, email so thanks a lot for joining me take care have a nice day bye bye